Hi, Handyman Kevin here. Lately we've been doing projects inside the house, home repair. Today we're going to do a workshop project. I built this workbench the other day on a particle board I found in dumpsters, 2x4s. It's pretty sturdy, but it doesn't have a really rugged top. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this stuff, which is tempered hardboard, also known as masonite, and we're going to cover the table. Now, what's interesting about this is the techniques we use are almost the same as you would use for a laminate countertop, or mica countertop. So, um, this is a good way to learn how to build countertops for not much money. You can buy sheets of this for about $15, so it's fairly cheap if you mess up. Not that we would. Uh, so, let's get started. Okay, for our first step, we want to make sure everything on the table is nice and flush and square. For countertop work, the belt sander is your friend. Now, if you don't have a belt sander, you can probably use an orbital sander, but the belt sander is the best for squaring off pieces of particle board. Um, belt sander is kind of a dangerous tool. The thing to remember is just to always keep the platen, that metal part, square to the table, and then you can't mess anything up too much. But you just want to go all the way around the edge, make sure everything is flush and square. Yeah. Take the time to do it right. Uh, if something was really far off, you could also use a router. Make sure that the nails are all flush. Uh, but then when else everything's squared up, you're ready to go and lay the lamp or the masonite. As you go, you can take your square, and, and you can just check that everything's square. This is like not a custom cabinet or someone's kitchen, so it doesn't have to be perfect. But on a workbench, it is nice to have square edges that you can clamp square things to it and uh, have everything stay square. So, do you want to check yourself a bit? This looks pretty good. Now, uh, a lot of dust on here, so we're going to have to blow it off. If you have a compressor, that'd be rad. I don't have one here. But I have this little auto vac that blows pretty well, so I'm going to get the dust out of there. That's pretty good. White glove inspection pass. Now. What I've done is I've taken a 4x8 sheet and cut all the pieces out a little bit oversized. But these are the front edge. See, I left an inch all, or a half an inch all the way around or an inch overall, so I have room to trim. And I'm just going to do one final reality check. As you can see, I have plenty of material here, which we'd always rather have too much than too little. And it looks like those are all going to work pretty well. Next step is going to be to apply contact cement. You could use the old style that you put on with a brush. It's very sticky, and I'm not enthusiastic about sticky. Uh, spray adhesive is basically the same thing. Just as sticky, but you at least have a chance not to get it on your fingers. So all you do is, is you go and you, you spray front edge and the back of your uh, your pieces here, and then you, you give it a chance to dry. Now, I'm not going to be too shy about spraying the top of the workbench because it's going to get glued next. So, if we get some glue on it now, it's just no big deal. But just want to get good coverage on the pieces. You really can't use too much of this stuff. 
Now I do want to be a little careful about spraying my floor. So I got this plastic hit thingy, which is really made for painting, just so you don't paint on the carpet when you do baseboards. But I'm just going to use that to protect the floor as I do this front edge. Just like that. Well, the glue's had a few minutes to dry. It's pretty dry to the touch, still sticky, however. Uh, next, it's called contact cement because it sticks on contact. So you, you actually just press it against the edge there. Now, to really set it, it takes somewhere between 15 and 20 pounds per square inch. You could use a little laminate roller, although actually that'd be a little light for this. A linoleum roller would work well. The uh, standby, however, is a scrap of wood and a reasonable size hammer. You just want to make sure every square inch of it gets about 20 pounds of impact pressure. Okay, and the other pieces, which I ran along, I'm going to stick on the edge. The most important thing is that the edges match up and there's not much gap. I cut them off square on the table saw so we shouldn't have a problem. So, you just want to hook the edge there. Get it as nice as you can. Considering it is just a workbench. And then press it in. And then you're going to do the same on the other side. So to trim this all off, we're going to use a flush trim bit in the router. This one's part of a set that's made for countertops, but any flush trim bit will do. It's a bit that if you have a router, you should have in your arsenal. And you want to remember to always go counterclockwise so the bit doesn't skip out or uh, kick back on you. some dust. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking my 5-in-1 and uh, scraping off any of the rough spots. That's because we need it smooth before we go on and do it. So what I'm doing here is I was going to put some painter's paper just so the stickiness doesn't overshoot. Get out my nice backsplash there where I'm going to hang my tools. So, uh, pretty standard, I just put a little row of tape where the uh, paper's going to hang down. Then I'm going to tape an apron over it. This is the same thing you do if you had baseboards or wainscoting in the house. So you don't even need to be as careful because the glue won't penetrate as well as, as house paint will. It's not as sticky as we might push. Set that aside. Now, I've dry fit these as a reality check. I've uh, you know, found the edge that fits best against the backsplash. I've marked them right and left, this edge towards the end. So, shouldn't be any chance to flip it around and cause problems now. So, here on out, same thing. You want to glue the table. I want to glue the backs of the countertops.
come into your garage. And we spray the glue. Again, good coverage, lots of glue. Glue on the bottom of the countertop material, glue on the particle board. This might not look like it, but it's actually the trickiest part because you have to get the countertop in the right place the first time. Uh, these aren't so bad because we did leave an overhang, but still, it'll stick if it hits that countertop. So you gotta kinda glide it over and then drop it all at once. So as you can sort of flex it, you get it a little stiffer. Come on, so I'd ease it against the backsplash. And there that goes. Now we can do the big one. See where I kind of catch the corner on the part that's already done? I roll over till it just drops in there. And it's always this kind of a wrestling match. You want to get that seam really tight. And not perfect. If, if this had been laminate for a kitchen countertop, we would have used a block plane and a sanding block scribed everything in and made it really like watertight. As it is, this is pretty good. Uh, I can always squirt a little silicone in the big gaps, probably won't bother. Uh, so now you just take the hammer and block and you, you pressure it down again and then you trim the edge just like you did the front. So I've got it all pressured down and I'm about to trim the edge of my router. One thing you do want to do is you want to run tape right along the edge. Uh, what that does is sometimes the router bearing sees up um, for whatever reason because they're out of oil uh, and if you don't have tape it'll leave a big black scorch mark on your front splash. Uh, again not as big a deal with a workbench but for countertops that's something you want to do. So you just just run a line of tape along the top of the backsplash that your router bearing can run against. Smooth it down with my thumb. And then you route away. Um, remembering always to go counterclockwise so that you don't have to worry about kickback. You might not be able to get all the way into the corners. That's okay, you can finish them up later with the route or with a hand file or a hand saw. Now as you come up to a corner with your backsplash, you don't want to peel the backsplash away with your router bit. So you're gonna come at that backwards until it's mostly gone, then you're just going to do the final pass in the counterclockwise direction.
that's it for the router. Now you just you take a handsaw, cut off the little ears at the end. If you had a, a laminate trim router, you could probably get a lot farther, but there's almost always a little bit you have to do by hand. So don't want to use your newest, nicest saw because Mahesis Snide will uh, make your saw dull. So I've got this kind of an older Japanese saw that should work pretty well because it's a pole, so it won't pull the the masonite away from the workbench. You can just run it along the edge of the counter. Just like that. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. And then this edge is kind of sharp. We're going to get rid of the tape. You can see how screwed up the blue tape is. That would be your laminate scratched up if you weren't careful. So you'll get rid of all the tape and then you just take a file and you're just going to break the edge. It doesn't have to be much, just, just so it doesn't have a sharp edge so it'll catch on things and fill your top up. Just going to kind of Roll the file. Keep it nice and smooth. Now, if, if you were doing a, a laminate counter, a formica counter, it'd be pretty much the same thing, except that you have a little bevel bit that goes after the flush trim but before the file. And that leaves an even cleaner edge. It doesn't work quite the same way on, on masonite because masonite is so much thicker. So for this, the flush trim and the file will be fine. And when I get done with this, my countertop on my workbench will be done. Okay, well, here's the finished product. A sturdy masonite top. Should last me a couple of years. And when it gets chewed up, I can just tear it off put a new one on pretty easily. Uh, I can finish this, paint it, or it might look nice with shellac. I'm probably not going to do that because it's just a workbench. It's going to get stuff on it. Um, but I might put a coat of paste wax on it. So, hope you enjoyed that. Hope it's helpful. And until next time, see you later.